Aviva Kafka, Carl Tomic, Doug Heater, Ed Spence, Greer Reichek, Jay McCulla, Linda Steinberg, Mike Sigorski, and Perry Sheldon. Um, absent is Jeff, Jeff Danielson. And that's it. Did I miss anybody? Ra Rachel's absent. Rachel is absent. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're going to be doing this a little differently, everybody. So bear with us. Okay. We're going to go through the agenda. I'm going to ask that any of our board members, um, when they second and uh, first, you know, make a motion and second a motion, please say your name when you do so. Um, and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. So we're calling the meeting to order. I guess I already did that. Um, can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I'll stand up. What's that? Okay. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the to the flag, flag to the flag of the United States, United States of America, America. America. <clears throat> and, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, stands. One, nation, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for, all. for all. Okay. Thank you. Let me grab my pen. Um, sorry, thank you for bearing with me. Um, okay, uh, the first thing on the agenda is, is number four, um, 4.1, upcoming events. Um, we have, well, um, the spring break, right? It was March 23rd to March 30th. That's happening right now. Um, the Hyde Park Education Foundation meeting was scheduled for April 15th at 6 p.m. I, I haven't heard whether they're doing that virtually or what they're doing. Has anybody heard differently? No? Okay. Sorry, um, Denise. Sorry, Denise. I had to unmute myself. Two things. Um, uh, the Hyde Park Education um, Foundation did meet vir virtually today, and I believe they're on target to do a second meeting in April. Uh, okay. Also, for spring break, um, yes, technically we were using our spring break days, but then subsequently we've been informed by uh, the state education department that March 18th through the 31st is not counting against us. So we will have the opportunity to consider whether or not we actually have a spring break, but we're, we're just trying to get through the uh, what, what, we, what we're hoping for is a, another announcement about what will be the fate of our schools for the month of April. Okay, thank you. Um, also on the, on the schedule was the DLT meeting for April 15th at 6.30. Do you know how you're gonna be holding that? Uh, we have not determined that yet. Again, um, a lot will okay on the governor's uh, announcement. Okay, and our next Board of Ed meeting will be Thursday, April 16th, um, and we'll be figuring out how we're going to have that meeting, you know, as we go along. We might be doing it the same way. We don't, we're not exactly sure what we're going to be doing going forward, but we're working on that. Okay, um, thank you. Okay, section 5.2. Um, we need a motion to amend the agenda. I don't, I don't have any amendments. Does anybody have any amendments to the agenda? No, okay, we should no. just adopt it. Okay. I'd like a motion to adopt the agenda. Doug Keeter, so move. Harry Sheldon, oh, oh, second. Okay, thank you. Um, although, I guess, no, we're going to do this differently. Um, does anybody want to abstain or have a nay vote? Okay. Then we go for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, That's and the motion passed. Aye. I'm sorry? Did everybody vote in favor? Yes, I, this is Mike, I did, aye. Yes. Okay, thank aye. you. Thank you, motion passed. Um, 6.1 is pride. Do, does anybody have any pride to share with the district? 
Yeah, I, I want to, this is Greer Reichek, superintendent. I, I want to take a moment. This is a very unusual uh, 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 and unprecedented time, but I have to say uh, how proud I am of our community for pulling together and uh, also for um, the volunteerism and the patience thus far. Uh, we have served uh, well over 350 families for meals. Um, we have done this. Shauna DeCurtis from our director of food service has done an outstanding job organizing both the health, uh, the, the food services staff and prepping meals as well as the volunteers to hand out the meals. This was done in this freezing rain. Um, and um, it was an enormous accomplishment with very little lead time. And I'm very proud of how uh, all that was organized. Um, I'm very proud of the collaboration we have right now with the Hyde Park Teachers Association and um, the planning that we're having with them and the, uh, the administrators on the instructional team. Uh, we are putting together, I'll talk about that in superintendent's report, but we're planning for any long-term closure collaboratively, and it's going really well. Uh, our technology department has been extraordinary. Uh, everything from setting up this uh, meeting to every one of the technical needs of helping first our financial uh, and operational departments to be able to work at home, and then... Um, we distributed over 300 Chromebooks to fourth and fifth grade uh, students um, this past week. So um, right now, uh, the feedback that we've gotten from the community has been very positive. Um, we certainly have a number of concerned um, people and rightly so, and we are doing everything we can to stay up uh, on top of responding to uh, concerns and needs. But I am very proud of how the Hyde Park uh, community has um, gotten together to prepare our initial response to this crisis and know and how proud I am of how we're um, working on the second iteration of responding to this crisis, which might be more long term. So I want to thank um, the teachers. I want to thank um, all of our operations people from food service to transportation, technology, uh, Linda, keeping payroll going. Um, there's just Aviva and the administrative team. There's just too many people. Um, and I hope uh, I'm going to leave somebody out inadvertently, but uh, everybody pulled together. Thank you. Uh, Greer, I would just add uh, from a, a, a point of pride, I had the opportunity of seeing some of the uh, food distribution, and I think it was great to see a good cross-section of uh, all the people that were involved with that process. Uh, there were principals there. Actually, the superintendent was there. Uh, there were teachers there. I think there were support staff there. I mean, it was everyone working toward a, a single cause of, uh, of getting food uh, out to those who need it. And uh, I think that's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a testament to, to the people that we've got here in the district. Greer, is that going to be able to continue? Yes, um, we are, we are doing a meal distribution on Mondays. Uh, I also want to say facilities, uh, have, they have also done a tremendous job uh, working round the clock to mobilize everything we need and have it where it's needed. So it's just amazing. Thank you. Uh, okay, moving on to 7.1 superintendent's report. I'm going to Denise, just yes? before you you do that, just a, just a meeting logistics. Rick is going to be muting everybody because there's a lot of feedback on a lot of mics. So just everybody before you speak, check check to make sure you're not muted, and, and Rick will control that. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so uh, at the time of school closure, uh, we mobilized to send our students home with learning packets. And that was to um, get us through the known time period uh, lasting up until 
um, March 31st. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are preparing our continuity of learning plan uh, to move, should we be closed for long term, to a digital learning environment. Um, the, again, this has been a collaborative process. We are putting together an entire K-12 um, booklet that will include what our digital learning will look like um, in the event of a long-term closure. I'm gonna talk about the long-term closure now and give you an update of, of what I know and what I can say uh, um, right now. Um, on the Dutchess County Executive's website, his last public announcement, he indicates that um, he expects the governor to make a decision about a long term. Uh, the only official status right now is that we're closed until March 31st. We anticipate that that will change. And as soon as it does, we will utilize our voice um, portion of school messenger to let everyone know that um, if if there's a longer term closure and how long it was, how long it will be. Uh, I've been asked several times whether or not the district could make a local decision on this if we could determine to close. Um, that is not uh, an option for a public school district at this time. Um, today we sent a message to students and families. Uh, reiterating that uh, the physical, emotional, and academic wellness of all is our highest priority, that we are wait, working on our plan for long-term closure. Uh, it will be a, there will be a parent resource guide and a staff resource guide that will be published on March 31st. Uh, um, we want to get it right. We want to make sure everybody gets it at the same time and they're all on the same page. So um, please uh, be patient. That will be posted. It's in the final editing stages as we speak. Um, if it's done earlier uh, on Monday, uh, but I'm not sure. I think we want to have the opportunity to vet it with our our teachers and, and make sure we've crossed our T's and dotted our I's. So we're, we're saying that our learning plan, should we be closed for long-term, will be posted on March 31st, and certainly we will uh, notify people. Um, I, I'm going to make a public uh, request again that uh, you, that people, if you are, if people are not getting emails via school messenger, they need to go on, log on to school messenger and check their settings. Much of our documentation and all of our learning will require um, that uh, you, that parents have access um, to the email portion of school messenger. Um, this learning plan that we're designing is uh, done in such a way that it supports uh, learning and academic growth without learning expectations that are unmanageable for at-home learning and or overly stressful for families. Uh, we There's a, a whole body of literature out there about what a crisis like this means for children and uh, while we are an academic institution and that we value that, uh, we also know that this is an unprecedented crisis and that whatever we send home uh, needs to be manageable and not overwhelming. Uh, I have one other important announcement. Um, if you are a parent who works in an essential industry as identified by Governor Cuomo on the uh, newyork.gov website, if you are eligible as an, as an essential industry worker and you are in need of daycare, you can email Lucille Wazalewski at hpcsd.org and we'll post that on the website as well. Um, uh, the school districts have been asked to identify any essential workers who are still in need of daycare and that we act as the liaison between 
um, our families and finding them appropriate daycare, again, for essential workers. Um, we want to acknowledge our students and um, let all of our students and families know you're on our mind 24-7. Uh, we feel your uh, grief in losing the educational settings, the beloved teachers face-to-face -face time, and all of the extras that go into what we call uh, teaching and learning, uh, including everything from the co-curricular to the extracurricular to the athletics. We want to give a special message um, to all our students, but very specifically to our seniors, the class of 2020. We recognize that there are rites of passage and celebrations that you're planning for and looking forward to, and we will do all we can should we return within this school year to reschedule all of the special events. Um, we don't have a crystal ball, but we feel and hear and know your need to be able to graduate from high school like all of the other senior classes before you and keep it as real and wonderful as possible. And I think uh, that is it for the superintendent's report right now. Um, just as a public announcement, we, we might have to schedule an extra board meeting um, and Linda will talk a little bit about that in her budget presentation, which is next. Um, up Greer, just just a quick um, addition to you know what you were saying, and thank you so much for just everything that's going on. I mean, I know it's changing every day, but I would just put a public plea out there to everybody in the community. You know, please stay tuned to the district for accurate information about the district. There's a lot of misinformation going on out there. And, you know, really your best source is our district. You know, don't, please don't listen to anybody else. You know, things get confused. Nobody's being malicious. People get confused. So again, just please look to the district for accurate updates. Um, okay, so I guess we can move on to um, 7.2, the budget update with Linda. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to share my my presentation and it's not showing up. I'm going to ask Rick if he could help me because my presentation isn't showing up when I try to share. Rick Work, can you help me with that? There you go, thank you. I'm sorry about that. So uh, good evening, everyone. So uh, tonight the presentation is the prelim preliminary budget presentation. This is the first presentation that has our final numbers. Um, although we will have more presentations to give to the board, we won't be changing the overall budget amount. Um, so if you can go to the Second page, please. So the next page. Yep, so our budget for 2020-21 is $102.5 million. That's a 3.84% budget to budget increase from the 2019-20 budget. Um, it represents a $3.7 million increase. Um, I do want everyone to remember that we are required to pay for our share for the BOCES capital project. And for 2020, 21, that payment is over one and a half million dollars. So that's uh, why the increase is 3.84%. Um, our tax levy increase is at 2.05%. That is the tax cap amount. Um, it's a $1.2 million increase. Um, our tax levy for 2020-21 will be $63.1 million. Okay, the next slide, please. So uh, this slide just shows the breakdown of some of the revenues. 
Um, as I said, our tax levy is $63.1 million. It's a 2.05% increase over the current year's tax levy. It is uh, within the tax cap. It's actually the amount that's right at the tax cap. Um, you may remember that we had um, some things, I was going back and forth about our BOCES capital project and how much of it was excludable from the tax cap and how much wasn't. Um, the last time I presented, I thought we would be at 2.2% for our tax levy increase, but after conferring with our, with our financial advisor, I learned that um, I had been accounting for one of the uh, amounts for the, the BOCES payment twice, so we actually have a 2.05% tax levy increase. Um, our state aid of $1.2 million increase, that comes right from the governor's proposal that was uh, given to us in January. It represents a 3.89% increase in state aid. Um, normally, um, I would say that we'd be waiting until April 1st to, uh, for the state to pass its budget to determine what our final state aid amount is. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen this year because of COVID. I don't think that we'll have a budget passed by April 1st. Uh, today, the governor did speak and he mentioned that uh, the way that our state aid for schools will be handled next year might be a little different. They may just be looking at state aid as we go throughout the year. And based on the revenues that the state is receiving, we may see decreases in our state aid throughout the school year. Um, that's something to be mindful of because if that does happen, we may be looking at uh, a need to make changes mid-year next year. Um, that's something that's a little concerning to me, uh, but unless we get more information from the state about our state aid before we have the budget adopted, I, I don't feel comfortable making a change just yet. Um, the other revenues represents everything else that's basically not taxes or state aid. So that's things like uh, charges that we uh, bill other districts for uh, tuition for students that come to our schools um, that are non-resident or homeless students. Um, we also get some aid, uh, or I'm sorry, we get some fillings from other districts for students that attend St. Peter's and we that we provide health services for. The interfund transfers um, from other funds, that includes the $660,000 from our debt service fund that we had planned to move over from uh, when we had the capital project vote. It'll help, um, it'll help us um, pay down some of our debt quicker so we have to actually borrow less for our next project. And um, we also have money coming in from the food service uh, fund because we now share our food service director with BOCES and uh, we paid BOCES for that through the general fund, but our food service fund uh, pays the general fund back for that. And then the bond anticipation note of 1.5 million, that's the uh, bond anticipation note that we're taking out to make the BOCES capital project payment in July. And then the amount of fund balance appropriation is just the difference that we need to uh, make sure that our revenues match our expenses. Um, every year we do appropriate some of our fund balance towards the next year's uh, budget, and we're expecting that we need to appropriate about 2.9 million. So the next slide, please. Thank you. So here's the different categories for our expenditures. I do have some slides later on that have the details of like salaries and employee benefits. Um, but I'll, I'll just say with this, this was a, a lot of changes um, throughout our budget process this year. Um, I thought originally that we would have larger increases in employee benefits because the pension cost for both TRS and ERS, that's the teacher's retirement system and the employee's retirement system, which is the system for non-certified staff, uh, the rates for both of those have um, increased. Um, however, the health insurance um, rates came in a little bit lower than I anticipated. Um, overall, health insurance is only increasing 4% and previously I had budgeted five. But on top of that, um, we, DHIC is receiving some money for a retiree drug subsidy, and we're using that to uh, apply to some of the health, insur the health insurance premium premiums for retirees that receive Medicare. And because of that, uh, those people will have uh, a decrease in their rates and the district benefits from it too because the amount we pay is decreased. So basically overall our health insurance, our blended rate increase is less than 3%. Um, BOCES has a large increase because the capital project of $1.5 million is included in that increase. Okay, um, next slide, please. 
right? So we're required to show the budget and its three components, which is program, admin, and capital. Um, I had been talking before that the reason why the admin portion is over 10% now is because of the BOCES capital project. Um, it would seem that we should be able to include the BOCES capital project in the capital portion, but New York State says that for school districts, the BOCES capital project payments are administrative cost. So because we added the $1.56 million to admin, um, the first time in many years, our admin rate is over 10%. If we didn't have that payment, we would be about nine and a half percent for our admin cost. Um, program costs are usually always just about 74, 75 percent. Um, that's where we want it to be. And capital uh, fluctuates depending on what's going on. But uh, for us, it's usually 12, 13 or 14 percent. Okay, next slide, please. All right. So this is just some of the breakdown of the salaries budget. Um, it's not broken down by program admin and capital, but it is broken down by the types of um, employees. So, of course, we would spend or we should be spending most of our money on teachers. Um, most of our salaries um, is spent there. It's about 63 percent for other uh, professional staff, like nurses, occupational therapists, physical therapists, psychologists and social workers. That's just under 5 percent of our salaries budget. Uh, we have 2.67 percent for aides and school monitors. Our technical, clerical, and secretarial staff is about 6.2% of the salaries budget. Our transportation, which uh, we have more employees in the in the bus garage than in any other building, um, their salaries are about just under 10% of the total salaries budget. Uh, maintenance and custodial is about 6.2%, and admin administration is 7.3%. Next slide, please. And here's the breakdown of our employees uh, employee benefits budget. So whenever I talk about the employees benefit budget, I usually just talk about health insurance and the pension costs. But there are other there are other costs that make up the employee benefits budget. So in addition to pension costs, there's the payroll taxes, which is really just Social Security and Medicare, uh, workers comp. Uh, we belong to a consortium. We're actually self-insured with other school districts in the county. Um, we have our health insurance costs, of course, the welfare benefit trust payments. Those are payments that we pay uh, because the unions cover some of they they cover some of the benefit costs for the employees. And then we have a few other benefits um, like course reimbursement or um, you know just the cost for maintaining some of the programs for our employees, like the 403B, are included under in other benefits. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so here we should see the breakdown for the total debt service budget and for the transfers to other funds. Um, the debt service budget is comprised of serial bond payments. Those are payments, uh, principal and interest payments that we make for any bonds that we currently have for prior capital projects. Um, when we borrow for capital projects, it's usually for 15 years. Um, the capital project ban, that's a bond anticipation note. Um, we expect to borrow a uh, short term to help us pay for some of the capital project expenses next year um, and our budget for that for the payments are uh, just over 2 million. Um, we are borrowing for the BOCES capital project. We're borrowing 1.5 million, um, but the payment on the actual uh, ban next year will be 313,000. And then we have the bus ban uh, we borrow for our buses over five years. So our bus ban includes not only the buses that we're buying next year, but um, some of the costs for the buses from the prior four years. So in total, our debt service budget is 5.9 million. Uh, the transfers to other funds, um, these are really just transfers of money to other funds and the other funds will record the expense. So we have a transfer to capital projects of $100,000, um, that's the, uh, capital outlay project. Uh, every year we can have one capital outlay project that's up to $100,000. Once we complete a $100,000 capital outlay project, we receive 100% of the aid in the next year. Um, I'll have some more information at my next uh, presentation about what we expect to do with that project. Then we have a transfer to food service for $50,000. Um, every year uh, the general fund pays for the negative balances for student accounts. So basically the general fund pays off 
any debt that the students owe on June 30th. Um, we have been seeing increases in this year to year, um, but 50,000 should uh, hopefully more than cover that amount. Um, and then the transfer to special aid funds really just represents the district share of one of our special programs. Um, there's a summer program for special ed students. It's called the end of school year program or ESY. Um, the general fund has to cover 20% of that cost and the state uh, pays for 80%. So we transfer the 20% from general fund to that special aid fund. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so the next few uh, slides show the changes to the budget. So these are the additions and the savings. I'll just say that in the past, I would show a few slides with the additions and then a few slides with the savings. On um, this year, I'm combining them just so we can see the running totals. Um, the changes that we have for 2020-21 include um, hiring a deputy tax clerk. Uh, right now, we have one tax clerk that we hire every year. Um, that person is the only person that's allowed to collect taxes when someone comes to district office to make a payment. Um, if that person isn't available, then no one else can help that person. So we would like to hire a deputy tax clerk for two reasons. One's that we have coverage. There'll always be someone that can help, but also uh, we expect that um, there may be turnover and we want someone else other than the tax collector to know how to do that job. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Another addition is to hire two part-time monitors, one for Netherwood and one for North Park. And that's really just based on the needs that the principals have expressed. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we're also adding a varsity girls golf coach. Um, and, <coughs> and we also want to um, purchase some lockers for FDR. Excuse me. The lockers for FDR are part of the capital project. <clears throat> We've always agreed that we would uh, buy the lockers through the general fund. <clears throat> Another addition is um, we have five students that are currently in district that will have to be placed out of district because we can't service their needs anymore. We're expecting the cost through BOCES would be 300,000. Okay, um, next slide, please. <coughs> Um, we this year we hired a new nurse because of a need of a student, so we don't expect to hire anyone, but we didn't have this in the 2019-20 budget, so we have to consider it as an addition to the 2020-21 budget. Um, we also had a change in the uh, business office. Uh, our senior account clerk took another position within the district um, rather than replacing her. Um, in payroll, we decided to just have that department with one clerk and to uh, use Questar BOCES to assist with the payroll function on um, the savings from not hiring that senior account clerk um, and switching over to BOCES is 46,000. Um, as we had been talking all year, um, the three new mental health professionals that we hired this year are currently paid from a grant, but we had to add them to the general fund um, the cost of that, including benefits, is $306,000. Um, we also have a, a savings now of some one-to-one -one aids. Um, those students that I mentioned earlier that will be um, placed in BOCES, there are um, a couple of aides that worked with those students, so we won't need those positions anymore. Um, and then based on other student needs, there are five other aides that we uh, won't be hiring next year. That savings is two hundred and eighty-one thousand. Um, next, next slide, please. Okay. So also uh, based on need, uh, we are going to have a reduction of nine and a half full-time equivalent teaching assistants. Um, with the benefits, that cost savings is three hundred and forty-three thousand. Um, we're also adding. Um, we're adding an elementary teacher due to class size. This was another position that was added during the current year, um, but because it wasn't in the budget, I have to um, just indicate here that it's something that's being added to the budget. However, in the savings from the retirements, there's one elementary teacher that we're not replacing. So those two um, costs basically offset each other. Um, so we do have 11 teachers that are retiring and one nurse. Um, we are replacing just eight of those 11 teachers. 
um, that savings altogether is 641,000. Um, next slide, please. Okay, and then in addition to the retirements, there are some other saving, savings in the budget from staff reductions. All of this includes the benefits. Um, we're reducing the um, 0.8 uh, full-time equivalent technology integrator, who's a reading teacher at the middle school and a health teacher. So altogether, the um, savings in total from the budget um, changes are $569,976. Uh, next slide, please. All right. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. So this is our, our calendar for the budget. I do want the board to have a bit of a discussion about this because we had to make some changes. Um, Jay uh, found out that we had to change the date of the board of the adoption of the budget. Originally, that was scheduled for April 30th, but we changed it to April 16th. The reason is that there's new legislation requiring us to provide absentee ballots to uh, people in the military. Um, normally, an uh, absentee ballot would have to go out uh, within three days, I think, of the budget vote, or seven days, I'm sorry. Um, currently, we have to provide the uh, absentee ballots to people that are deployed for the military 25 days before the budget vote. And we can't um, send out those absentee ballots until the budget's been approved by the board. So because of that, we backed up the adoption of the budget to April 16th. Um, however, I still have uh, more presentations to give. Like I said earlier, I don't expect to change the overall dollar amount of the budget, but there's still more information uh, to provide to the board. So we're wondering if the board would want to have a meeting before April 16th to uh, receive another presentation, or if the board would want to uh, adopt the budget on the same night as my next presentation. So um, other than that, I don't have any more information from the presentation. I'd be happy to answer some questions and also to uh, know if the board wants to talk about adding a, a board meeting for another presentation. Um. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you, Linda. I'm sorry, I was just writing some notes. Um, discussion about the another presentation on the budget from the board? I think it would depend on the scope of, of uh, whatever changes may be. If it's still gonna be pretty much the same, this is Doug, by the way. Uh, if it's gonna be the same as we've, seen with just minor updates, I think it would be good to uh, get that presentation and then adopt it that same night. So um, like I said, I don't expect that the overall budget will change at all. The only thing that I could anticipate might that might change are the revenues, uh, but if there's any information from the state about state aid, but I don't think we're gonna get that either. Because I don't think the state is in a position to um, to make changes to the to the budget the way that the governor proposed it or to even pass it by then. This is Perry. I, I agree with Doug's rationale. I think that uh, we're just going to have to go with what we know and, um, and and go with it, uh, you know, based on whatever, you know, whatever we've got for the next meeting. I'm in agreement. This is Mike. I agree as well. Yeah, this is Carl. I think that makes the most sense. Ed? Yes, Ed, Ed agreed oh, also. Ed. Okay. Okay, so Linda, we will just go ahead and that's on April 16th. Is that, am I right? That's the date? Yeah. We'll the, go ahead and have the, the, the last presentation on April 16th and we'll have the vote at the same night? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that's what we'll do. Okay, and um, are there any questions about this presentation? Well, yes. In fact, I, I want to apologize. I I didn't announce ahead of time that um, that we're not we're not doing public participation for for obvious reasons due to the nature of our our meeting. But um, I would like some discussion. We have had some um, some questions, and I'd like to I'd like to have some discussion about the 
staff cuts on the budget. I know that, the, that the people are very concerned about that. Hi, this is the so, oh, Go ahead, Rick. Uh, yeah, I mean, I will address the um, uh, the three, the uh, reading teacher at Haviland Middle School um, based on student enrollment and student need. Um, we were able and looking at schedules, uh, we uh, were comfortable in that all students will still receive their AIS services at Haviland Middle School and uh, we could reduce a position there. Uh, also, uh, the 0.8 technology integrator, uh, that is an area where we felt that we could obtain some savings and um, work with our existing staff to continue to support technology integration in our classrooms. Um, lastly, uh, the health teacher, um, we have been looking at this for a while, um, and in light of hiring some of the additional mental health staff, the social workers and psychologists, and looking at other models, we were able to reduce health by one full-time teacher. Currently, we have a, a half-time, one of our full-time teachers, uh, deliver services at the elementary schools for half time. According to the regs, this can be done by a general education teacher. Um, our plan is not to have the uh, classroom teacher take over all the lessons, but the plan is as follows. Um, there are uh, particular units that are required for elementary health and Tom Cunningham has put together a plan on how we will deliver the health services. Certainly our local police and fire departments can provide the assemblies and address the personal safety, um, substance abuse uh, and child abuse and mental health will now be taken over by those uh, school psychologists and social workers that we've hired. Um, we will ask the building nurse to do the um, growth and development unit. We will have our, uh, we'll do some curriculum writing so that our uh, general education teachers can um, make sure that built within one of their science unit is the, uh, um, is the unit on germs, viruses, and healthy habits. Um, so we are comfortable that with community co collaborations and uh, existing staff, we will be able to cover all of the uh, required modules for elementary health. And then at the secondary level, again, declining enrollment, catching up, um, we know that we will be able to provide all of the uh, required health instruction at the secondary level. Um, throughout this process, we also realized that we were offering at the middle school double the amount of health education required um, at the middle school level. Um, it predates um, many of us. Uh, we think it was might have occurred at the time when they brought sixth grade up to the middle school, but there is no need to double the amount of uh, health instruction at the middle school. So, um, uh, so we are uh, eliminating one health um, position. Um, we have a retirement in physical education and uh, it's our hope that uh, the person, uh, that someone in the health department who is qualified will uh, move over and take the uh, phys ed position. And again, that would be their choice. So that covers the uh, the uh, professional staff, and I'm going to turn it over to Aviva to talk about the reductions in the aids and teaching assistance. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to start with the aids. Um, the uh, most of our aids are either a part of um, a student's um, education plan and special education, or we have some aids for medical reasons. Um, so all of our aids are assigned to students um, and based on student need. So we do know, and I, Linda mentioned in her budget presentation, that a few of the aids um, won't be needed because students are moving on to more restrictive placements out of district, and the others are all student by student, where we know 
that we will not need those positions next year. So that's the, the that's what the aid positions are, and they go up and down every year depending on student need. Um, the teaching assistants, um, I want to explain. Um, we have a social emotional learning special class program um, at Violet Avenue at elementary. We have it this year. We plan to have it next year and keep the same number of um, teaching assistants with the behavioral training and designation. But at the secondary level, this year we did not run the SEL program at middle school or at high school. Um, and we made the commitment to have a transition year for the behavior teaching assistants at the middle school and high school to continue this year only um, to be able to support um, the small handful of students that would have been appropriate for that program. Um, and we didn't have enough students to support running the whole program. So those positions were in place for this year only to support those individual students um, in their less restrictive programs. So um, that's um, this was expected for about a year and a half, and, and it's happening now. So all of the students next year have plans um, that are either in district or out of district where the program will meet their needs and we do not require the additional positions. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, anybody else? Have any questions, Belinda? Okay. Um, okay, so we're moving on to 8.1 board discussion. Um, I, you know, I just again wanted to just reiterate, you know, thank you to everything that's being done for our community. And, you know, even though it's um, not specific to the school district, I just want to say, you know, I've been contacted by a number of community groups that are willing to help people who need help um, for anything, getting groceries and, and things. I know that there's groups in, in every town. You know, I've been contacted by groups in Hyde Park. I've been contacted by a group that's, the, that, that's in the town of Clinton, you know, all, you know, all our school district and stuff. So if anybody does need help or assistance, you know, reach out to those groups or you can reach out to me and, and I can help try to put you in um, touch with people. Um, this is a PSA for me. Sorry, everybody. Um, anybody else have anything for the board discussion? Um, I would jump in, Denise, again, and just echo what Greer said and Aviva said, you know, thanking our teachers. This is a very challenging time, and they're really stepping up to the plate, and um, we're going to get through this together. Thank I, you. I have one. I have one. This is Doug. I have one question. Um, there's a, an established food pantry at Viola Avenue. Will that remain open? Does anybody know? Yeah, sorry, Doug. I, I was, <laughs> took me a while to unmute. Um, yes, actually, uh, Diana, Diana, with uh, the help of the Department of Health of Dutchess County has created a plan um, that uh, um, follows all of the protocols for the Department of Behavioral and Community Health. So she's putting together a team and um, they will distribute food um, as planned um, with many protocols for safety built in, including you know who can work on the food, how it's distributed, all the cleaning and safety protocols. So uh, I wanna thank uh, Deanna and uh, her connection with the Department of Health for um, being able to put this together to make this food pantry uh, remain open during this crisis. Okay, and I'm sorry, just, just one other thing. Am I open? Yeah, just one other thing. Um, again, we're getting a lot of emails in, you know, because we, especially since we don't have public participation and please everybody realize that we will be, we will be returning those emails. We'll be addressing your questions. Okay, anything else? Okay, we'll move on to 8.2, board subcommittee report. Um, has anybody met in the past two weeks? I don't, I don't think so. Right, nobody's got anything? Nope. Okay, I didn't think so. I didn't think anybody met. Okay, um, 9.1, um, I would like a motion to approve the consent, consent agenda items. 10.1 through 10.8 as presented. So moved from Mike. Second, Carl. 
Um, any abstentions or nays? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Ed, aye. aye. Okay, um, motion passed. Okay, so I don't, oh, forgive me. Okay, hold on. Okay, that brings us to 10, which is new business. Um, right, I need a motion to approve each of these. So, um, so I need a motion to approve 10.1, Proposition 1, estimated expenditures of the district for the 2020-2021 school year budget. So moved, Carl. Second. Second. Any abstentions? Any nays? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Um, wait. Okay, never mind. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Forgive me. 10.2. Um, may I have a motion to approve 10.2 Proposition 2 Transportation Plan? So moved. Doug, so moved. Carl, second. Any abstentions? <laughs> Any nays? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mike. Aye. 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 Motion passed. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I thought I had a problem. Um, okay, may I have a motion to approve 10.3, resolution calling for the annual meeting of the district, legal notice for budget vote and board member election. So moved, Carl. Second, yeah. Mike. Any abstentions? Any nays? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. May I have a motion for 10.4, printing of poll book? Doug, so moved. Second, Carl. Any abstentions? Any nays? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. We have a motion for 10.5, appoint elected <clears throat> election official. So moved, Mike. Second, Doug. Any abstentions? Any nays? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Um, we have a motion to adopt 10.6. 2019-2020 risk, risk assessment internal audit report. So moved, Carl. Second. Second. Doug. Any abstentions? Any nays? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. <clears throat> May I have a motion to um, to adopt 10.7? Bid awards, athletics mini bid. So moved, Carl. Second, Mike. Any abstentions? Any nays? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. <clears throat> motion passed. <clears throat> May I have a motion for 10.8 vendor Thomas Drohan Waxman Pedigro and Mail LLP? Doug, so moved. Second, Mike. Any abstentions? Any nays? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> motion passed. A motion for 10.9, vendor expanding expression, LLC. So moved, Mike. Second, Carl. Any abstentions? Any nays? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. 
Okay, that brings us to 11 other matters deemed necessary by the board. 11.1, um, are, is there anything else that we need to address by anybody? I just want to say great job, uh, Denise, for running our first ever virtual meeting. So hopefully it's our <laughs> last, but uh, good job to everyone. I think this went well. Yep. Thanks. Um, I'm really grateful to our technology department and to my more tech savvy <laughs> friend. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, there's no need for a second executive session. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second by Perry. Any abstentions or nays? All those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passed. Thank you, everybody. We're now adjourned. Thank you. Perfect. Thank Great you. job, everybody. Thank so, you. Great job. Yeah, great. Thanks, Rick. Thanks. Is uh, YouTube off now? Uh,